Hi, my name is Brian Amrein with Value Driven Analytics, and today I'm going to show you how you can do more with Coalesce. See what I did there? Let's slow that down. You can do more with Coalesce. It's not funny if you have to do an instant replay. Back to Coalesce. Today I'm going to show you how to use Coalesce to replace null values with another value or another field or set of fields. So let's get into SQL Server Management Studio and get started. Here we are in SQL Server Management Studio where I'm gonna show you how to use Coalesce. But Coalesce can be used in any SQL platform and version of SQL. Uh, we're just using this as an example. It's a very simple concept, so I'll give you just a little context around the data set we're, we're looking at and the use case and then we'll get right into Coalesce. So I'm using a database here that I've created called Value Driven Analytics. We're gonna create a schema or a folder of tables within that Value Driven Analytics database using this code, um, not related to Coalesce, I'm just showing you the setup. You can take the same concept we're about to walk through and apply it to maybe your own sales table that you have access to, especially if there's columns that have missing values. Uh, so now we've created this schema uh, the table that I'm going to be using in this illustration is going to be called sales. Uh, so within the value driven analytics database, the coalesce illustration schema, we're creating a sales table. Um, and I'll go ahead and set that table up right here. And I'm going to use this to insert some rows into it. And then we'll take a look at the table. I'm just setting this up very quickly um, so you can see how how I'm creating this, inserting data into it manually. But again, you can use your own sales table for this. Let's take a look at our data set in question by just doing a simple select star from it. Uh, this sales table is one row per sales line item. It's essentially sales grouped by customer and product. And you'll see we have the customer and product field in it, and then three different values. One that tells us how many of those for that customer product combination, how many sales have been ordered, how many have been invoiced, and how many have we actually received the payment for. So you'd probably have your uh, the, the products ordered first, uh, and then once they're delivered, perhaps they're invoiced, and then after that, uh, you eventually receive the payment. So what you'll notice about this is we've got some null values here. Uh, let's take a look at the payment received sales. You can see for the first two, um, for Sam, for the model build product, he's had two sales where the payment has been received. Uh, Brent's model builds one sale where the payment has been received. The rest are null here. In some cases, uh, there will be databases will have a zero populated, but in other cases, if it doesn't exist, perhaps it'll be populated like it is here with a null value. It's missing. Now, you don't always want to replace nulls with a zero. Um, and especially when you're building a data science model, sometimes null or missing means you don't know, which doesn't mean it should just automatically go to zero. So consider what your strategy is. But in this case, let's say we don't want to have null values. We want this, it would look a whole lot better and be easier to work with if we had this uh, as zero. A few implications of having null values. Um, null values, if you're doing something like an average, those null values will be removed from the average. They won't be considered uh, in the numerator or the denominator. Versus if you were to replace them with zeros, they would be considered. Of course, they don't really impact the numerator, but they would impact your denominator. Uh, so your result will be different depending on whether you've replaced nulls with zero or not. So that's just one reason why you may or may not want to replace nulls with zero. In this case, let's say we do want to replace it with zero. So I'm just going to select star, which will select all of them. And I'm going to create another variable in this case so you can see the difference of when you use coalesce versus not. Um, coalesce just starts with the word coalesce, uh, as you can see. And then there's open parentheses as with any function. And the argument it, that it'll take first is what value do you want to use if first if it's not null? Then what value should this column have? So what we'll do in this case is use the payment received sales. If payment received sales is not null like it is for these first two rows, it should just have that non-null value, two and one in this case. But if it is null, 
that's where the second argument comes in, and it uh, comes after a comma. So first field, kind of priority, if this is not null, use this, but if it is null, the second argument in this function, which comes after the comma, is what will be used and if, if this first field is null, kind of like a fallback. So in this case, we're just going to impute a value. Now this is a numeric field, so we'll need to impute a number. In this case, we want it to be zero. But if you were pulling a character field, you would want the second argument to be a string in quotes, uh, maybe the word missing or something like that. Uh, but in this case, we're going to replace it with zero if the payment received sales field is null. And we'll call this imputed. We're imputing zero, essentially. Look at that. Now, these first two rows are exactly the same values uh, as it was for payment received sales because it wasn't null, so it used the value of payment received sales. But where it was null here, we have replaced it with a zero. Perfect. <laughs> Now, uh, what if we wanted to, instead of replacing it with a zero, perhaps replace it with another field? Now, I'm not saying you'd necessarily want to do this, but let's say if payment received sales isn't populated, we'd you want to use the invoice sales instead. Again, not saying that we'd necessarily want to, it'll be different depending on your use case, but if that was what you wanted to do, the way you could execute that is instead of putting a, a single value here, like we did before of zero, we can just feed it another field, like the invoice sales column. See what happens here. Ah, need to add a D after it. Okay, so our third or first and second row here look exactly like they did before because uh, the payment received sales value was not null, and so that was what was used. For our third row, it's still null. Why? Because even the second argument, the first argument was null, the second argument was null, and so the final uh, result is null. But in our fourth and fifth rows here, we actually end up having, instead of a null value, which we had for payment received sales, you can see it's using the one and two values from the invoice sales column the column that was in the second argument of our coalesce. Set our fallback is the invoice sales field. It's our second argument. And so that's what we're gonna populate these two rows with. Now, what if we wanted to have a, another fallback? Well, if the payment received sales field is, is null and the invoice sales field is null, then what do you wanna use? Well, perhaps we add in another fallback. You can have as many as you like. Um, so we'll do ordered sales in that case. And you can see what happens if you, if you never find one is it, it just ends up being null. But now that we've added another fallback, ordered sales, let's just see what happens here. Ah, now this third row, nothing else has changed for the other rows because they either had a populated value for the first choice, the first argument, payment received sales column, or the second one, invoice sales, but this middle row had null values for both of those. Now we've added a third option if there's null values for the first two fields mentioned, and that's to use the ordered sales column. And now you see that um, it's putting a value of one there. Uh, and of course, if, if you maybe instead of this, um, maybe you just wanted to put a single value there as well, that would work just fine too as a, a final fallback. You can see now it would give it a value of zero for that third row. So that is how the coalesce statement works. Now this is exactly the same as writing a case when statement. So let's just go back to our original example where we were gonna use the payment received sales field and replace it with a zero if it was null. Watch what happens if we just write this as a case when statement. It's exactly the same. So using the case when statement, we can say case when this payment received sales field is not null, then we want to use the payment received sales field, else zero. If it is null, use zero. And as uh, imputed through case win, <laughs> we'll call it that. And let's take a look at the result. It's exactly the same. And likewise, if, if we wanted to have more backups here, 
Um, we'll just do this one last example here. We could say something like, well, if, if the payment received sales uh, was null, so it didn't, it, it didn't pass this first um, clause, it didn't qualify for that, uh, we would use the invoiced sales as a fallback. And if the invoice sales is not null, then use the invoice sales column. And then we'll do an L0 there. So a case win with multiple clauses. There you go. Now you see it's using one and two here uh, as the fallbacks for rows four and five, and then it replaces with a zero there. So you can use three clauses in a case win statement or a very concise coalesce statement. Your choice. I would recommend the coalesce statement. Well, now you know how to use the coalesce statement to replace null values. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video. And if you'd like to see more SQL training videos like this one and on other topics and Python and Power BI and beyond, all kinds of analytics topics, please consider subscribing to our channel. If you had any questions on what we discussed today, please consider leaving a comment and I'll do my best to get you an answer. And now it's your turn to apply Coalesce to a real use case.